Let's say that we want to acquire more than one channel. How do we do that? So um, we've just uh, concluded imaging. So our laser power is very high and our exposure is very low. We want to swap this because we don't want to fry the sample while we're looking around. So I'm going to put my exposure time to, let's say, 400 milliseconds or even 300 milliseconds and my laser power down to 10%. And I'm going to hit apply. What that will do is it will remember the setting if I switch to another channel. So I'm going here. You can see that my current position, the other thing I'm going to do because it's more practical is switch to one light sheet and move this to the middle. The reason being uh, if I'm on two light sheets, uh, the update time of the screen is very low. Um, it's very sort of long. So it's uncomfortable if we're maneuvering and having to sort of see one side than the other. So I'm going to go to video. You can see here in current position, I'm at zero, which is very near the top. So I need to rotate the focus knob clockwise to go into the sample. OK, so let's let's hang out here, for example. Let's say um, I want to see how this looks in the 488 channel. So in the 488 channel, you'll notice that it's out of focus. Um, so what do we do about that? So when you have more than one channel, they can be, they might not always be in the same focal plane depending on what channels you have and what the magnification is. If you have channels that are very far apart and your magnification is high, they might not be in focus at the same time. So what do you do about that? So what you do is you go to the shortest wavelength that you want to image, in this case the 488, and you focus by hand on the microscope. So that's what I'm doing right now. You obviously can't see because I'm recording the screen, not microscope but then you just focus until things look good in the shortest wavelength channel which is 488 then you go to the 647 channel and you click on this chromatic correction dialog and you shift the position of this lens until it's perfectly in focus so you can see that looks a little bit blurry that looks very nice and crisp. So I'm going to set it there. So once you've made these adjustments, you can see that when you switch between channels, each of them is going to be in focus. All right. So another thing that we need to do if we're going to uh, image more than one channel is now these checkboxes do matter. And we need to put checkboxes on the channels we want to image. So we want to do 488 and 647. Finally, we have the issue of how do we set the exposure so that it's good on both channels or the laser power? So here's the thing which is super annoying. You have to set the exposure the same for both channels. This system does not have the capability of setting the, a different exposure for the different channels. Um, what you can set differently is the laser power for each channel. So we basically need to go through the exercise we went before and check whether both channels are going to have the same settings or whether one is going to need more or less laser power. Uh, you can see if I go to 800, and just increase here so we can see an image of roughly the same intensity. This one looks good as expected, and the 488 also looks good. Um, so we could use this. If we wanted to bring the 488 up more, maybe we, could make, maybe we could use 20 milliseconds and then lower the laser power on 647, but increase it further on 488 and sort of to, to kind of balance them out uh, so that we have the amount of light that we want. But let's say this uh, is an acceptable amount. So if uh, we have a good balance of exposure and laser power, we're, we're almost ready to start a dual channel imaging. So how do we do it? Now we need to flip exposure down to 10 milliseconds and increase laser power to 100% for the 488 and the 647 and hit apply. If we don't hit apply, so for example, if we wanted 50% power and we don't hit apply and then we switch to another channel to do whatever, and then we come back, it doesn't remember the change. So we always have to make sure we hit apply. I'm not going to use both sheets just in the interest of time. Um, so one sheet from the side is fine. I'm going to use this sheet in A even though maybe it's not optimal. But again, this is just to illustrate how to take a multi-channel image. Uh, the zoom is correct. Uh, that's what's on the microscope. I'm looking at it right now. Uh, the Z stack is fine. So to take a, a Z stack with multiple channels, now we need to go back here. And so we need to decide whether we want to take channels first and then Z, or do a Z stack for each channel. 
So we can either do a Z stack for all of the green, then a Z stack for all of red, or go to each plane and do green, red, green, red, green, red. I don't recommend you do each channel green, red, green, red, um, because that is going to take a very long time. Uh, and also, uh, for some of the lasers on this system, specifically the 561, there's a slight flickering that occurs when it turns on and off, and that's going to screw up all, all of your imaging. So I would strongly suggest that unless you're doing some very fine co-localization, in which case we should talk, uh, that you do uh, an entire Z stack in one channel and an entire Z stack in the other. So how do you implement that in the software? The way you implement it is you go here to devices and you make the first one table Z and then the second one ultra filter. You want to make sure that both have auto save on and you can see that when ultra filter turned on, it said split. Don't change that. That just uh, tells uh, subsequent um, software that these are actually channels. If you wanted to do channels at each Z plane, uh, you would flip these. You would make this ultra filter and this Z, but that's not what we want to do. Uh, auto save settings, sample one, zoom, uh, even though it has the same num name as the, as the previous one, that's just the base name, then uh, the, um, the actual time will be different, so it won't overwrite any of your data. So with this, everything is ready to go, and we're ready to take a, a two-channel image, which we'll do by clicking here. So you can see it'll go down to the bottom. and start acquiring in one channel. You can see here the steps it's taking. Uh, when it's done, it'll go back to the bottom and start acquiring in the other. The imaging just concluded. You can see that now there's another folder, um, but this one has a different start time. It's also bigger in size. Uh, and inside you will see that there are, again, the same structure for the image uh, data and their names, but now there are some images that say channel 01 because it's a two-channel image. So if we convert this to an Imaris uh, file by dragging this here, uh, what you'll see is when, when that file gets converted into Imaris, it's a two-channel uh, file. So you can see the file conversion is complete. And if I open the second uh, data set that I created, you can now see there are two channels. And again, check out the Amaris uh, viewer video to see what you can do uh, with a data set like this. So this concludes the basic functionalities of the software. Um, there are other things that you can do, uh, which I will discuss in sort of a more advanced video. Uh, namely, those options, additional options are cropping, which is perhaps the least advanced of them, tiling, um, using a single sheet instead of three sheets, and using the dynamic focus. So all of those will be in a sort of separate uh, video or sets of videos uh, discussing those more advanced features. But the very basics are what I've uh, told you so far.